Hello everyone. Apologies for this delay of 15 minutes in starting uh, today's C Conversations. I welcome all of you to the C Monsoon 2022 C Conversations titled Drawing Out Natures. I'm Rohit Muzumdar from the School of Environment and Architecture. This is the sixth conversation of Drawing Out Natures, which foregrounds the role of imaginations in inventing worlds, and also how we come to understand them by constructing realities based on specific ways of seeing, listening, sensing. It is an engagement towards making visible the invisible relations between natures and the natures of human and more than human agency. We delve into the drawing out of natures to advance imaginaries of engagement with contemporary eco ecological crises and climate emergencies, and the contests that come to erode and expand so socio-spatial claims in the shared ecologies of our worlds. This online series has been co-curated and supported by the Shared Ecologies Program of the Shama Foundation, along with the ongoing support of Urban Center Mumbai. In today's C Conversations, we have with us Rohan Kale, who will be taking us through Maharashtra Stepwells campaign. He is the pioneer of this campaign. He has studied at the Wellinger Institute of Management and has worked in the field of human resources. Welcome, Rohan. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, in this lecture, give me a minute and I'll then give it over to you. In this lecture, Rohan Kare will speak about his process of documentation and conservation of the several step wells that are scattered in neglect across the region of Maharashtra, about their role in medieval societies and how they may be revived in their present economic fabric through adaptive and cultural strategies. So welcome, Rohan. We look forward to hearing about your work. Uh, over to you. Thanks, uh, C, by the School of Environment and Architecture, for giving me an opportunity to present as captain to the faculty and the students of your prestigious uh, institute. Yeah, uh, I'll just uh, share the screen first. Is my screen visible? Yes, it's visible, Rohan. It's visible. I'm here. Okay. Uh, fine. If you need anything, just call out. I'm here. I've just oh, shut off sure. my camera. Sure. Thanks. Yeah. So, whenever we talk about steppels as such, people point at Gujarat or Rajasthan because we have always heard about Gujarat and Rajasthan famous for steppels. They, they have huge water structures, right? From like fifth, uh, five storage, six storage, seven storage steppels. But Maharashtra as such, people have not even heard about steppels in Maharashtra. But as I uh, take you through this uh, entire uh, PowerPoint presentation, basically, and make you aware about the numerous steppels, you will be wondering like, uh, how, how beautiful the steppels are in Maharashtra as well. So our uh, campaign is like, uh, like Maharashtra as such had, not even Maharashtra, the entire India had numerous temples and huge numbers. And then over the years, as tap water, we got access to tap water, many of the uh, steppels got lost basically or are lying in the state of misery today. And if this numerous steppels across India and across definitely Maharashtra as well, are revived, then it can be an excellent source of water for drinking, domestic purpose, and irrigation as well. And tour, and uh, it will also give a boost to the tourism, uh, tourism perspective as well as the heritage conservation as well. So under Maharashtra Steppels campaign, we are covering uh, Barrow in the Pashim Maharashtra, that is the, uh, that is the Pune Bay, Ahmad Nagar Bay, Marathwada Bay, or the southern Maharashtra, it is commonly referred to as Barrow, that is the local word for a step well. If you go towards Aurangabad side or the Vidarbha side, it is commonly referred to as Baudi, 
or Bauli. Then if you go towards Konkan side, the Ratnagiri Bend or the Sindhadur uh, district, it is commonly referred to as Gore Bao, Pokhar Bao. Then there are forms of Kond, Pushkarni or Pokhran, which, which are attached to a nearby temple. Then there are helical steps. A helical format is a round well with a spiral set of steps leading to the well shaft. And there are these huge step tanks. So under Maharashtra Steppels campaign, we are covering every aspect of water conservation. So I'm looking off at this campaign from an overall perspective of heritage conservation, tourism development, water conservation, then also study of ancient or medieval period trade routes. Because if we, if we date back approximately about say 300, 500, 700, or even 2000 years ago, we never had this uh, dams or uh, access to tap waters. So that means every village must be having a steppel of its own or after every say five to six kilometers, there must be a steppel built alongside the road. There are numerous mountain passes in Sayyad in Maharashtra, which we call as Sayyadris. So in Sayyadris as well, people uh, used to travel, take this mountain passes, what we call as in local language, Ghatwata. If you go towards uh, the North Maharashtra, there are, there, there are very important routes called as Buranpur is there. So Buranpur is a place which used to connect to the MP side and then straight to the Agra side. Then even if you talk of Nashik Bay, there are numerous routes which used to take you to Gujarat side. So I'm very sure this all these trade routes must be having thousands of steps. And I'm talking of data points. Uh, if, if we refer to the British Gazetteer year 1881 publication, which is now uploaded on the Maharashtra State Gazetteer site, it very clearly mentions that Nashik as a district had 800 wells with steps. Khandesh had Khandesh that is Nandurbar, Jaradao, and uh, Dure had 1,200 wells with steps. Ahmednagar had 1,700. Pune had 3,200, Solapur had 4,700, and Satara is a huge count of 5,990, close to 6,000. So that means if, say, just six to eight districts are having a count of, say, 17,000 wells with steps, then entire Maharashtra must surely be approximately about 50,000. And even if I say an upper limit of, say, like 50% or 60%, must have gone into construction or into road widening, then to we still have a scope to look at 20,000 of such water bodies, water structures across Maharashtra. And the first thing to do so is to map the exact locations. So as I said, like there is a mass public, like out of the 100% of ratio, just 90% of people are the mass public. But 10% of the people are the geologists, the historians, the ethnologists, the architects, the photographers, including the drone photographers. Then there's a strong team of heritage lovers. These are the people actually needed for this campaign, basically. And that is the reason I'm approaching numerous architectural colleges, geology colleges, I'm meeting different ethnologists, historians, I'm explaining them about this campaign and how we should go in a very structured manner going forward. So this is the entire plan of Maharashtra Steppels campaign mapping. So, so far we have mapped 1,780 Steppels across Maharashtra, the exact pinpoint locations. Then we are also identifying Taluka coordinators. There are 354 Talukas across Maharashtra. So every Taluka will be having a separate individual team of them and they will give directives to the numerous hundred plus uh, villages below, below them. And we will be also be setting up village to village teams. Like every village will be have a specific say three to five or even 10 people team. And that is how we are actually uh, mapping as well as tracking as well. So what I'm doing is that I have a list of 44,000 villages across Maharashtra. So uh, we are actually going from village to village or inquiring in different villages, are there any steppels? Because to do any positive or good work, we should at least know the uh, steppel locations. 
then comes the documentation part the documentation will be divided into four stages subsections one is a written document checklist like how many steps are there then uh, what is the simple shape how many entrances are there are there any police are there any uh, niche or are there any arcs then uh, who owns the step well is there a water, a water body nearby uh, is there a river nearby where the step well will get recharged then uh, heritage documentation wherein endologists and historians will club together form one team and do the heritage documentation that means how to identify the difference between the chalukya kalin step well and how to identify the difference between the yadav kalin step well because these are overlapping to each other after chalukya yadav was came before chalukya was rashtra kota so how to make a specific differentiation in between their style of architectures then there are inscriptions what we call as shila lake so how to decode that shila lake there's a team working on it they have studied approx about 50 to 60 shila lakes in maharashtra uh the shila lakes were placed on barrow uh, that is the scaffolds so decoding them and then uh, giving that information to general public then architectural documentation that is collaborating with different architectural colleges first explaining them about this vision of the campus and then how we can collaborate and then uh, maybe the students can take this up as a internship program or how how to go about it like uh, that that college will be college uh, the principal of the college can uh, take a call on that and then uh, collaborating with the professional architects as well then the photographic documentation like photo uh, capturing the photos from different angles as well as the grown photo photos like we have uh, like few of my friends have totally clubbed the props about 25 grown shots of different couples are there with us post monsoons we will be taking approx about 100 to 150 couples grown footages so that will give a very different perspective to how couples look like preservation and conservation like encouraging local people the durga samvardhan sanskars and the numerous ngos they all can come together and do the basic cleaning of scaffolds conservation architects can play a very important role in conservation of scaffolds uh, so and same way reviving of scaffolds reviving of scaffolds will require some technical knowledge from a geologist hydrologist or say water management consultant so how we so i am trying to approach numerous water management consultants this big firms who have geologists in their team giving them sharing them the steppel locations like how the steppels can be revived or if there are any government schemes like uh, there was a scheme i remember shivkalin pani yojana uh, recently the town planning i'm touch with the town planning uh, team as well in of maharashtra have passed on the data to them and they are also finding schemes on how to propose this data to the central government then tourism development identifying unique steppels and then promoting the steppels as tourist attractions so uh, i am i had met uh, the maharashtra tourism uh, joint director last uh, last year i told them that is not even a single mention of any steppel on your website and i proposed to them that you should open a separate section of steppels because we have the data along with us and they readily agreed so this entire steppel map of exact locations is now uploaded on their website along with some ten steppels photos and information going forward we will be sharing additional steppels data and the photos with them so approx about in the in this year you will see a flood of approx about 25 to 30 good steppels photos being uh, popularized on the maharashtra steppels website Then Steppel Depot Sub. This about uh, we did celebrate the Maharashtra Steppel Depot Sub. There is uh, numerous steppels across Maharashtra, but uh, lit up with bias and decorated with rangolis. The pics I will showcase in the my last slide. Then how it all began? Like I took a career break from my job, and it was a self-funded project. Uh, the main thing was like to bring all the sections of society together. and tell them that we should work as one team because to as to achieve what i am planning require would require a massive involvement of people and it should be a team effort only it is not a one man job basically so i did travel from across maharashtra from october 2020 till march 
I did a solo ride across Maharashtra on my bike, roughly covered up to 14,000 kilometers. I personally explored uh, something around 400 sepals then, and uh, later on, I additionally did something around 150 sepals or so. And totally in Maharashtra, I have personally explored something around 600 odd sepals. And Vidarbha, Maratwada, Pashim Maharashtra, Dakshin Maharashtra, Uttar Maharashtra, Konkan side as well. I met each and every one of them, right, from geologists, the architects, the archaeologists. I explained them about this campaign, the vision of this campaign of how we will be going in a very structurized manner. And because of all this combined efforts from across the Maharashtra, we are now able to set up a very huge platform for this campaign. This was just my picks, like uh, there was capitals and farms, there was capitals and black use, there are, there are capitals and those in many forest area, there were numerous capitals. So, so the map that you see in the form of Maharashtra map is actually the capital locations. So what you should do is that visit our website www.indianscapitals.com. You will see this map here. And the arrow where I'm pointing, there is square icon over here. So you have to click here and the entire 1780 Skeppels map so far get auto-populated in your respective Google Maps. Once you click it, a photo will open up and giving some information. So uh, out of this 1780, approximately about 1000 places where we have provided the Skeppels photos. The rest of places we are in process of providing the photos. So you just have to click the skeptical location and hit the direction button. It directly a route map starts. You do not have to ask anyone in the village as to where the skeptical location is. And every time I make any new changes in the map, it gets auto updated in your respective Google Maps. So common locations of skeptics. So where are the common locations basically? You should also be aware of this. Like there are numerous trade routes in Maharashtra. If you go from Kalyan to Zunnar to Akole to uh, Paikan, which is in the older times it was known as Pratishkan. Paikan is in Aurangabad. So this is a 2000 year old Vyapari Marg of Satwahana region. Satwahana period basically. So then comes the Ghatwata. As I said, there are numerous mountain passes in Sayyadris. Then Mahamargs. If, if I see the Mahamargs going from Nashik towards the uh, MP side, you will find a step well after every six kilometers. There are numerous Jyotirlinga, Ashkavanayak Shiv temples, this rock belt temples. So you will definitely find a step well in the vicinity of the Shiv temples. If you see uh, Trambakeshwar, if you see Bhima Shankar, or say Shikhar Shingnapur. So Shikhar Shingnapur is a place which is on a hillock in Satara. And there are four different routes coming from different sides towards uh, that hillock. So we have located 12 steppes on all those routes. Then there are local Gramdeva temples in Konkan. There are Samadhis, there are Vadas, which we call as Gadi, local forts, etc. Then there are Yatra routes. If you go from Pune to Pandarpur, Pune to Tulsapur, now the route has changed, but uh, in something around say uh, 150 or 200 years back, the route was different. And on on this route, Maharani Ailabai Holkar has built numerous temples for the Yatra uh, people, for the people who do the Yatra. Then there, there are hill, land, coastal sea forts. If you go towards Sindhadurk side, Sindhadurk fort has three temples. If you go towards uh, numerous hill forts like uh, Harishandragad is there. So Harishandragad has a temple as well as a Pushkarni is there. So there are numerous forts which are ha which are having scapels. Panara fort. Panara fort has approximately 11 to 12 scapels in that entire region. Every village must be having one scapel because people used to be depending on scapels only for their domestic purpose, for drinking, for bathing, and for irrigation as well. There are numerous farms where scapels are located. Then drought areas of scarcity of water, where there is drought, mostly in the Maratwara side or the Vidarbha Bay, where there is often a scarcity of water, there you will find scapels as you just three storage, five storage scapels. So this is the village to village mapping of scapels. I had created a Google form and circulated across Maharashtra. 
to gather information. And this is how we are actually tracking it. I have a list of 44,000 villages across Maharashtra. So what I do is that every time I update any new step, well, I update here only. So what happens is that in one click, I get to know that suppose Kaluka Y in district Satara, I'll easily come to know that uh, in suppose example, there are 100 villages in 10 villages, we have located 17 step wells. That means 90 villages still have a scope to find step wells. Then our heritage. Uh, this is a slide presented by one of my colleagues. Actually, he's an ethnologist. I will not go much in depth because I'm not an ethnologist. I'll just shoot us some beautiful steppels across Maharashtra. Uh, so these are steppels in Raigad, Ratnagiri, and Konkan side. So steppel besides Rede Gumat, Banda, Savantwadi. So this type of structure, you will also find such type of structures in Goa as well. There is uh, the Sapa Majid, there is some, uh, one more Majid is there. You will find uh, this type of structures over there. Then just from uh, Rede Gumat, Banda, across about 50 meters from this place is another beautiful steppel. Then Sapteshwar Mandir is there at Sangameshwar, which is like a hillock. Even Kanteshwar uh, Steppel, Kanteshwar is a mountain uh, hillock basically at uh, Alibag Sai and it has three steppels over there. If I talk of Mukti Steppel, Nakhare and Ganesh Gure, so the typical uh, steppel of Ratna of Kunkan, that is Ratnagiri and Sindhadur, will look like this only. Like it is carved out of that laterite rock and it has rock cut steps basically. So uh, the width of the step well, right from the start till the well shaft is approximately about five to six feet. And uh, this may vary, the steps may vary from 10 uh, steps to approximately 40, 45 steps as well. This is a Madegad step well at Mahad, which is a mountain pass step well. Then there are step wells in North Pongar, that is the Palgar side. So depending upon the structure, it seems like a concretized one. So it, I feel it must be a later Portuguese side or like Portuguese or later Maratha one. Steppels in Pashim Maharashtra, Pune. So there are amazing steppels in Pune. Like if you see the first uh, steppel, which is a Mallika Arjun Mandir steppel at Loni Bakar, approximately one and a half hour from Pune city. This is a Yadav Kalin steppel. A Chalukya or maybe a Yadokan, mostly a Yadokan step well. If you see a Mansar step well, this is again a Yadokalin step well and it has a Shila Lake as well, an inscription mentioning that it, has a, it is a Yadokalin step well. So Yadokalin step well is approximately about 700 to 800 years ago, 12th to 13th century. Malthan Rajwana. So Malthan, there is a fort. Malthan is in Shirun Taluka of Pune district. So Malthan has this beautiful step well, which has lots of chambers on all the sides. And uh, then it is, uh, these chambers have some uh, rooms like thing inside it. Maybe it must be a resting place for travelers or something. Then step well near Khandoba Mandir, Zunar. This step well was entirely covered with mud. But then a local team of a uh, ex army man, leaded by an ex army man, dug up this entire steppel and this uh, was showcased. The beauty of this steppel was showcased. Then there's Baneshwar Mandir steppel at Karegao Dabade. So this is a private property of Srimanta Dabade family. And it has three steppels at a distance of approximately 50 meters from one another. Steppels in Pashim Maharashtra, Ahmednagar. Most of them are again Chalukya Yadav Kalin steppels because Aurangabad is nearby and Aurangabad Devkiri was the capital of uh, Yadavas. So Hatti Barao is a Nizam Kalin uh, steppel. So Nizam ruled uh, Ahmednagar and they have established this city called as Ahmednagar. So it is a 15th century steppel, Hatti Barao, and it has a Earthen pipes, underground earthen pipes, what we call as Khapari noise system, a very beautiful technique wherein this underground water pipes used to take the steppel water to a place called as Farabaksh Palace, which is approximately about 500 meters from this place. Bhushan Deshmukh sir is there from Ahmednagar, he's a historian, and he has 
deep understanding of Amber Nagar as a city and he has passed on this information to us. Bayewandi Kothar Step Well at Shri Gonda. So this is again a Chalukya Yadav Kalin Step Well, same as uh, Ranzandau side, Ranzandau Step Well as well. Ligo Step Well. Ligo Step Well is a two side entrance step well. As it is like uh, if you see Bayewandi uh, Kothar Step Well or uh, Kothar Step Well or say this uh, Wambori, sorry, Brahmini Step Well at Rahuri. This has an entrance from three sides. So this Yadava or Chalukya Kalin steppers are a typical uh, steppers of three-side entrance or four-side entrance. And a uh, uh, mandap, that is this part, one, mandap on one side. And it has a lot of uh, this Dev Koshka, what we call as niche. This is a very popular feature of uh, Chalukya or Yadava Kalin steppers. There are four types of steppers which are mentioned in the ancient text. One is the Nanda type step well, which is a one side entrance step well with three layers of landings. Then comes the Bhadra step well, which is a two side entrance step well with three, three, that is six, six layers of landings. <coughs> then comes the uh, Jaya step well, which is a three side entrance step well with three, 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 nine layers of landings. And the last one and the most important one and the huge one is the Vijaya type of step well, which has four uh, entrances from four sides and 12 layers of landings. So this is something which is mentioned in the uh, ancient text. This is Dwe, which is a five story step well and Maharani Ailabai Holkar, she has built the step well basically during her region. And uh, Due as a district has four five storage steppels and we have mapped all of them. So Due Karavan steppel is there, which is again a five storage steppel. So this all steppels are lying in a stake of neglect basically. So we are trying to generate massive openness across Maharashtra for preservation of steppels. And then the conservation architects being the technical people can play their part. But the basic, if people are not aware, people are not inculcated to preserve those steppels, then uh, even if the conservation happens, then they again will turn into a state of neglect. So we are trying to create positive vibes across Maharashtra by doing multiple community building exercises, how to involve people in preservation of steppels. Then steppels in North Maharashtra. This is a Dorup fork step well. Dorup is a fork which takes approximately about four hours to climb. And on that fork, on the top, there is a three storage step well. So, Naitai step well is a L shaped step well with chambers inside it. Mangru again is a very strong built up step well with uh, step well from two sides. So, this two side step wells, the entrances from two sides, is basically uh, rare to find in Maharashtra. Then steppels in South Maharashtra, that is Panara, as I said, this is Andar Bao, which is a, almost a two to three storied steppel. Then Karmara steppel. Karmara steppel is one of its kind in Maharashtra, a huge massive steppel. And it is a 96 steps steppel. It is quite huge in size. Then steppels in Marathwada. All the steppels are from the Chalukya or Yadav Kalin steppels. Uh, I'll give you a classic example of Nagnath Mandir steppel, which is at Hatnur village in Senu Taluka in Parmani. This steppel was completely dilapidated. It was about to fall down. But the uh, villagers came forward. They self-funded approximately 22 lakhs. And then the restoration of this steppel was done. Same case with Raipur steppel. The Raipur steppel, if you see the difference between this uh, brown and white, the layer of this white was completely covered with mud. During this India-wide lockdown, all the villagers of this village came together, they dug up the mud, each and everyone participated, right from the children to the adults to the police, like everyone participated in it. They dug up the mud, exactly. Uh, entirely, and now this temple is very clean and filled with good, clean water. Bhandeshwar temple is in a farm. I had to literally park my bike and walk across about 10 uh, minutes to reach the farm where this temple is located. 
then there are stepwells in maratwada this paradgaon stepwell is a octagonal stepwell with a uh, niche above them that is gave push so this stepwell again is very unique like octagonal stepwells are not ma many in maharashtra hardly a few of them so we need to preserve all this architectural beauties across maharashtra devgiri fort has two stepwells once you enter inside one on the left side one on the right hand side paranga fort again has a stepwell with chambers and rooms inside the stepwell so very magnificent type of stepwell paranga fort it is a state protected monument and uh, this entire fort along with the stepwell uh, step is state protected veru stepwell the restoration work was done by marani ayya bai holkar the shila lake is available stating the same so that means the stepwell was built quite earlier then sundara stepwell was again built marani ayya bai holkar style jagji stepwell so jagji stepwell again seems like a chalukya or yadav kali stepwell depending upon the architectural style stepwells in marathwada further like uh, batsegao stepwell is there a very beautiful stepwell if you see on the right hand side is a manda and niche are there uh, this is wagru stepwell where there is a it is besides a samadhi so this stepwell is so huge that it used to cater the, to the needs of the entire village basically now it is uh, well protected and if, uh, maybe in the if it is revived to something or maybe a pipe is inserted in inside the water can be pulled out Ambar stepwell like Jalna, this is a pokhran basically. A large form of a pushkarni is called a pokhran. So it is a magnificent structure with temple uh, on one side and a huge uh, form of a step tank. Stepwells in Vidarbha. Stepwells in Vidarbha are as huge as three storied, five storied each. So Anjani Khud stepwell is just about thirty minutes from Lonar Sarovar. Lalbag stepwell is in the middle of farm. It is a huge two storied. L shaped structure stepwell bagachi vire vihir is again in a farm it is a three storied structure and quite huge as well barshi taki uh, stepwell is in akola again a shiv pindi uh, shaped stepwell the uh, owner of the stepwell has kept it really clean uh, pinzar stepwell uh, again a stepwell uh, which has a temple on one side and uh, three side entrances Stepwells in West Vidarbha, Amravati. Now Amravati has quite beautiful stepwells. Uh, this stepwell like Riddhapur and the stepwell which I will be sh showcasing in the next slide. They both are almost similar looking stepwells from the gold perspective. This is a four layers of lining stepwell. Then Mahimapur stepwell is Maharashtra's biggest stepwell. It is a five storey stepwell. As in, like, feel like you have come into Gujarat or Rajasthan. It is built in that structure, basically, which is quite popular in uh, Rajasthan or uh, Gujarat. This uh, stepwell I am talking of, Tarigao Dashasar, which is exactly like uh, matching uh, to uh, the Rittapur stepwell. Pawani stepwell is again a very magnificent stepwell. The upper part of the stepwell, which is not showcased in this photo, has lots of idols and carvings on it. Then this uh, again, the stepwell uh, has chambers and has rooms inside it for the travelers to rest in. Stepwells in Vidarbha, East Vidarbha, that is Nagpur region. So Nagpur, there is a place called as Rampe, which is a taluka as well, and it is a hillock basically, consisting of a group of uh, temple complex, temple and stepwell complexes there. So you will find a range of uh, temples as well as temples on this complex, and it is uh, like a Tirtha place basically, a tourism uh, like pilgrimage place. Then Adasa, Adasa must be having some historical importance for sure because there are four temples in that uh, small village in Saundar. Then Nagardan Fort is uh, besides Ramtek. And it is again a beautiful fort, and it has a two-storied stepwell. Then again, stepwells in right in the core city of Chandrapur. One is at Inglaj Bhavani stepwell, and one is Sonai Mata Mandir stepwell. There is a local group basically over there. Uh, their name is Eco Pro, Eco Pro, and they constantly do the restor uh, restoration part, not the restoration basically, the preservation part of the stepwell.
then this is one step well which is very unique not to be found anywhere across the world i have not seen or not even heard about it so this is a sword shaped step well so it is built actually in a sword shape so once you go to the bottom of this uh, well uh, step well and you look about you will feel as if uh, you are looking at a sword so this was built during the maratha period this is a unique helical steppel nowhere to be found anywhere across the world this steppel was covered in garbage basically it was basically a garbage dump but 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 after we started this campaign generated massive awareness across maharashtra to be uh, encourage the villagers to come forward and clean the steppel that not only remove this uh, entire garbage from the steppel they also brought the steppel to glory basically so this steppel has this is a helical form of well with steps leading from the eight different sides to the well shaft and every step uh, every uh, side of the step has a devkoshka about them that is niche about them maybe uh, and uh, some uh, idols of gods must be placed inside them in the ancient times and now uh, it is not placed maybe it must have lost or like due to invaders attacking the uh, area so we have lost this uh, beautiful idols or something like that so this is the unique helical steppel which the graphic design has been done by mayurish karke who works with the state archaeology department so you can just have a look as to how beautiful this steppel must have looked when it was originally created so there's lot to learn from maharashtra steppels as in the architectural design of the steppels that drone shots i have captured a couple of uh, drone shots in this uh, ppk the rest of all uh, we will be showcasing soon to the general public so the drone shots of uh, this is the hatnur uh, village steppel the same steppel where i mentioned that it was completely dilapidated and the villagers self funded this project that drone shot of vikrant steppel now just see how beautiful the steppel looks like it has basically a mandap on two different sides and uh, it has uh, steps coming from two different sides so even if you see the structure it is quite magnificently built and this drone shot is by a friend of mine amar reddy he has captured approximately 20 different uh, steppels drone photos and i have personally spoken with approximately 15 drone photographers across maharashtra post monsoon season maybe starting from november or december we will be capturing approximately 100 to 150 uh, villages uh, or steppels drone footages so you will see a flood of drone footage uh, steppels of maharashtra on the social media december onwards study of ancient trade routes like if i talk of 1001 steppel this is the largest steppel in the konkan bay now if someone had to build a steppel he could have built it at dabur which is the just about just uh, opposite to this uh, steppel dabur is a 13th century port and uh, in between is the vashishti nadi which leads to kher on the left side and the uh, right side chiplot so if someone had to build a steppel as huge as this one he could have easily built on the opposite side why this side and this steppel the unique feature of the steppel is that the width of the steppel vis a vis the common ratnagiri steppels this steppel width is approximately 10 to 12 feet and it is quite long as well it has two uh, arcs it has two uh, niche and it has two structures which we call as sharab they look like a lion or tigers basically so this steppel must be having some historical importance why it was built in that particular location only and the researchers are in process of finding out then the satwana era water systems so this is how actually the left hand side pic is of a google uh, image satellite view screenshot and the right hand side is actually how it looks like so this is the kalyan to python ancient trade route or maybe different trade routes uh, coming to python as a central uh, location so this is brahmanwada again this uh, location is on the 
ancient uh, Satwana period credo. Then Shirla Parthur Taluka. So uh, Akola. So this uh, steppel again uh, is in Akola and there's one more steppel in the Akola district which is very close by. This is uh, near Karzat Taluka Raigar district. So one, see, all uh, the structures may all the structures we will not be able to uh, locate now itself but going forward maybe say 20, 20 years down the line or say 25 years down the line we will have a huge scope of locating the structures and then uh, some trade routes can be defined basis the locations of steeples then documentation so why is documentation necessary like people uh, write blogs on uh, facebook but this is not solving a purpose. Like, how will you compare this to blogs with each other if we have to do some research and analysis? So, what I'm saying to public is that, to our team is that, let's document in a proper structurized way. Like, mentioning all this information right inside the checklist and then converting this checklist into a proper Excel sheet. So that whatever step information we require going forward. Imagine after 10 years, we will be having a data of 500 steps documented. So within one click, we will be able to know which is the highest uh, step, which has which step has the highest uh, layers of landings, how many arcs are there, which is the how many steps are there, which are Yadav or Chalukya Kalin, how many steps are there, which are Maratha Kalin, how many are Nizam or Mughal Kalin. Uh, how many steps are there which has uh, entrances from two sides, entrances from one side, whatever analysis we have to do can be done on this uh, basis, this step by database basically, what my uh, vision is, get this entire data converted into an Excel sheet and keep it in a centralized manner. Like uh, whoever needs this data can be provided to them and many students have, can come up and do PhD on this uh, topic. They're like in Steppels also, there are many uh, different topics, minute, minute topics, which one can take up and do a PhD. Then this is the different sections of uh, people, public, general public, which are actually needed for this campaign, right? From the mapping team, the architectural documentation, the archeology, span ecology, historians, photographers, drone photographers, the geologists, the print media. So my framework is that going forward, every district will be having an individual team of their own and a cross-functional team across the uh, 36 districts of Maharashtra, which will operate independently. And I, as a central coordinator, will be collaborating with all of them, will be working in close coordination with all of them to get it centralized at one, one place. And this is actually be how the skeptical documentation will look like going forward. So this is a very digitalized format. Like right from the books, you do not recollect which skeptical was mentioned on which page. But then here in just one click, you will be able to know all the important uh, facets basically of this, uh, like how many uh, steps are there, floors, where in which dynasty, classification, the growth, right? And here where you see a photo, there will be a slideshow basically. So a drone shot capturing photos from different angles in May, the, how does this temple look like in a raw format, maybe in the March or December in the flooded this and uh, like, like steppel is flooded with water and how does it look like. Then whoever does the architectural documentation, this documentation will convert it into a JPEG format and with new credits given to them at the bottom of uh, this temple photo, the architectural documentation will be uploaded here. Whoever does the sketching of this uh, steppel will be uploaded here. So whoever does the decoding of the inscriptions and whoever does the documentation part, every new credits will be given to them and it will be available to general public free of course. So benefits of documentation. Documentation will help us identify similar types of steppels across Maharashtra and it will help us conserve the steppels which are in dilapidated condition. Now, if you see the Jalna step well, the step well is in very uh, good state. I will showcase the next slide. So this is the step well, how it looks like from inside the Jalna step well. And if you see the Satara step well, it is completely dilapidated. So basis the drawings and the 
photographic documentation of the Jalna temple, this Kartara temple can again be restored to its original format. The, uh, the, uh, it should not happen that the uh, conservation architect uh, uses his own creativity and the entire originality gets lost. Then people's movement. I will showcase the different work which is going on across Maharashtra. Like there is a team from Nigri and Karad, uh, Taluk of Satara district, who has cleaned the step well on the left hand side. On the right hand side is Sundara step well, which is at nearby Aurangabad. A local team of say uh, 10 12 people came there and cleaned up the step well. Then this is the step well which I'm talking of the helical step well at Walur, which is now in a state of glory basically. This step well was actually looking like this. There were numerous trees grown inside that, it was turned into a garbage camp. But then after creating the, such a massive movement across Maharashtra, people's campaign, we are now encouraging the different uh, villagers to come forward and clean their temples and just see how magnificent their temples will look like. Then this is again uh, the temple in the same village. This also Walur village, some 200 meters, 200 to 300 meters away from the helical temple. This was again turned into a garbage dump. The people started uh, pulling out the garbage. So the, this uh, approximately 30, 35 people started coming and, and uh, started removing the garbage. So you will see the work in progress and how this temple actually looks like now. It is very clean now. So this is the temple which I mentioned. Uh, Sometime ago, the steple which was entirely covered with mud. So imagine the painstaking efforts they have taken, basically, the villagers, right from the innocents like uh, like children to the adults, they all came forward to preserve the steple. And now the steple, as you see, is filled with very clean water. Then this is a team of uh, Ramesh Karmaye, sir, who is the ex army one, uh, ex army person. And uh, he, along with his set of friends, Junnar Katta, Junnar team, uh, cleaned something around 15 to 20 steppers in Junnar Taluka with the efforts. Then uh, this is Dhanti Steppel, Umar Ked, uh, Taluka Yavatma, where a group of uh, youngsters, basically some uh, 15 youngsters came together, Vishnu Fulaywar and his group of friends, and they cleaned this entire steppel. Then this is a place in Manwat uh, region, uh, that is Manwat Kaluka, Manwat city of Parmani. Just imagine the state of this temple, how it was and how it is today presently. They have taken lots of efforts towards it. They like, I've, I'm seeing the journey on every day. We have this WhatsApp groups where people keep on updating the progress of each and every temple. So um, we are constantly motivating the team, showcasing their efforts to different people so that it encourages different villagers to take up this noble cause. Then this is again a set of uh, say 20, 25 youngsters from Pedagao village at Parbadi, where they came forward, removed all the garbage and now the temple is in very clean condition. Then this is Durgavir Samsta, which is a Durga uh, so more than some star, they have a massive force of approximately a thousand people uh, across the Pontan Bay, and uh, they a uh, set of two three people from that group, along with local villagers, they removed that tree which was rooted inside that uh, steppel, and they uh, actually cleaned the steppel and on that steppel even the depots of what celebrated. So this is Bhavaigad Parivar, again a. Uh, Similar type of Durga Samadhan Samska like Durga Vip, they even Baraigat Parivar has a thousand strong man power along with them and they do the fort uh, restoration work and uh, they have now uh, stepped into uh, steppel conservation as well. So uh, Durga Samadhan Samska, so these are the few Durga Samadhan Samska, it is not possible to mention each and everyone's names. So I mentioned their logos in this slide. I thank all of them for being a very important part of this campaign. Uh, and on the day of Mahashivaratri, 1st March 2022, we celebrated the Maharashtra Steppel Deepotsav, wherein 160 steppels across the state were first cleaned. And on that, uh, 
the diaz who were put up like they were actually the skeptics were actually glickering like gold so this is the shekta barao in aurangabad uh, district this is the uh, ram mandir barao which is in alibak and this happened on the same day as same day first of march same time so it showed massive collaboration as well and massive unity as well across maharashtra to stand as one common team then this is the charkhana steppel which is again a uh, chalukya yadav kalin steppel this are steppel on the right hand side is uh, chakreshwar mahadev mandir steppel at sakhan near pune on the left hand side is mawar taluka steppel near lonawar maharashtra uh, uh, steppel reports are if you see on the left hand side uh, this is devudav galande steppel mostly i feel must be a chalukya or yadav kalin steppel this is uh, this is the picture which i showcased in the earlier slides this is a uh, chandrapur uh, city steppel so just imagine there are two people standing on the activa besides the activa here so you can just gauge the length of the steppel then uh, on the left hand side is the same steppel where durga bir uprooted the entire uh, tree which was uh, rooted inside it they clean the steppel and deposit some more celebrated over there this steppel do visit it is just close by this is devloli steppel in badlapur and from badlapur it is hardly approx of 20 25 minutes a very beautiful steppel it has carvings inside it and uh, ganpati idol as well rock rock carved the uh, ganpati idol so bar igad parivar along with the local villagers uh, decorated this steppel then this is a l shaped steppel where the mallar uh, army that is mallar uh, foundation uh that is a friend of mine is he has this group at down the uh, taluka in pune district they decorated this temple then this is the left hand side steppel is a l shaped steppel two story steppel it is in, right in the heart of city satara city this is bajirao bhi on the right hand side i'm not very specifically reminding the uh, like like which steppel is this this is the madegat steppel where if you see the one in karban like uh, this is uh, or feta so he is uh, pratik more so he along with a team of sat sayadri pratishtan they are constantly every month they clean the steppel of madegat and they are keeping it in a very good condition this is the pingri steppel on the left hand side on the right hand side is again one beautiful steppel maharashtra This temple is wound uh, village temple in Mawar Taluka near close to Lonawla. This uh, is a Raipur temple which was covered with mud. The uh, this people celebrate the temple because of that. The on the right hand side is Parner village temple. So let's join hands to revive our temple. So I am also collaborating with the government as well. Like I am in talks with the uh, Groundwater Survey Development Agency how we can. prepare some schemes or something or if there are any existing schemes and how we can revive them i am also in touch with the town planning uh, department of maharashtra government as to how we can revive steppels on that urban areas basically so let's join hands in uh, to revive our steppels and there are numerous other activities which are constantly doing to uh, upscale this campaign like uh, now in the uh, month of september onwards we will be organizing a steppel exhibition in each and every pocket that is each and every city of maharashtra from september till almost till june next year every weekend you will see the steppel exhibition being organized in every different city of india where approx about 150 steppel photos will be showcased so we are starting from mumbai itself for the steppel exhibition and mostly in the month of september we will have three back to back exhibitions on every weekend at different pockets of navi mumbai and mumbai thank you wow thanks rohan that was really really something inspiring <coughs> i'm getting water as well yes you must have been very exhausted to yes. manic anecdotally i'm reminded of um, didi kosambi's introductory pages of his uh, 
of his book, An Introduction to the Study of Indian History, where he writes that the study of Indian history, for, for the study of Indian history, it's not really, really the archives in the state departments, but much of the work has to be done on foot. And in that sense, um, opening out the fact that uh, there are step wells in this region, which has not previously been known uh, as a place um, where step wells formed an important uh, part of the built form of different places is a significant intervention to be kind of made. That's, that's, a, that's a really wonderful um, um, intervention that your work makes. Um, I was I, I, curious um, when you started talking about uh, your work and you mentioned that you left your job to take a break from your work and started doing this. And I'm, I'm curious to know what got you interested in the, in the step well. So that's one thing and kind of open out what, what struck me apart from all of these things. So I'm kind of opening out a list of, I mean, some questions, some comments, um, and then you, you could respond to those and then we take up questions from the audience. So my, my, I'm, I'm curious what got you excited about okay. engaging with the step well, that's one. But let me go further and kind of um, talk a little bit more. Um, in your presentation, you opened out uh, several aspects about the step wells. One, you opened out the different kinds of step wells in terms of their form, geometry, so on and so forth. The different locations that where they were made in along trade routes, along um, in, in temple complexes, in forts, and different regions of Maharashtra, right from Konkan to Vidharba and all of those regions that lie in between probably have different kinds of step wells. Work is that this may have not only been influenced by the geography, by the physical geography of place, but also by the kind of patronage that was that that they must have received from those who governed. Uh, these places at those moments in time. So, so I mean, it's it's quite interesting to see the range that 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 your work covers. But in spite of this range that your work covers, probably what may kind of you know hold all of this together, and um, as as something that that we should think through, um, and it's critical to kind of probably foreground this and um, infrastructure. And in, in this case, infrastructure for water supply did not exist by itself. Things changed after the British came and the piped water supply was introduced in India. Prior to that, infrastructure such as water supply infrastructure were, were a part of public space. So if you see, I mean, if, if your photographs show that it's not only the step well, but there may be a institution with, which manages that, that step well, but it may have also worked along with say maybe a market, a local market or something else or the other. And in that sense, it was integrated into the everyday life of those places. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, talking from my own experience of um, heritage documentation in Virar, not far away from Bombay, just uh, the Northern peripheries of Mumbai metropolitan region. You mentioned about Wada, this is, to the west of what, and the Agashi temple over there has a step well with, within it. And all the temples around 
And there are numerous talaws, actually 90 talaws that we identified, which were public property, which were, which were uh, not within private property. They were either owned by the state or by the trust, by some or the other trust. And in all of them, there was some kind of a public program that, uh, that was a part of this infrastructural space. So it, it would have been a market, it could be a, be a temple, it could be a library, so on and so forth. And these, this kind of coordination or integration between different kinds of programs integrated these infrastructures into the everyday life of a place. Now, when, when we engage with conservation, what happens is two things happen. One is that one is interested in two kinds of things. One, the built artifact, and two, probably the water supply source. But what, miss, what goes missing in all of this is the ways in which this infrastructure was integrated into everyday life. And that's probably, I think, one of the most important things to think through because this is really the struggle of conservation, actually. Because either it be ends up becoming a monument that kind of gets preserved and kind of pickled, or it becomes, it gets framed through the tourist imagination. And beyond these two imaginations, probably there is something that we ought to kind of think to integrate these into place. And therefore, I mean, so this, this is kind of my, my own kind of learning from, from my own work. Um, and therefore I'm drawn to the question or drawn to the aspect of the idea of the campaign. Campaign as in the idea of a collective form of action, which you've kind of put forth requires several kinds of things. I mean, the mundane work of kind of going and finding out things on foot or by vehicles, a list of processes to be followed for documentation, kind of getting different kinds of experts in. And lastly, I mean, uh, after, after the several steps that you showed, the idea of the festival that you kind of proposed and that the idea of the festival in terms of the campaign, um, connects to um, kind of thinking through the idea of tourism or kind of integrating these step wells or historical um, artifacts, which are architecturally important and environmentally important um, into new tourism circuits that could be developed. But what might one think about in terms of developing the campaign if Heritage has to be integrated into everyday life of, of people. So that's my, that's my uh, second, uh, you know, um, question to kind of really hear your thoughts as probably you may have kind of developed your thoughts around this. I'd love, I'd love to hear them. So these are, I mean, I'll, I'll kind of open up these two things for the moment um, and then, then we we'll go further from here. So your first uh, question, like uh, step wells, okay, how I got attracted towards it, what, what, what was your trigger point basically? So in my previous job, I have worked for 12 years in one company and for that 37 uh, job related work, I often used to travel to Gujarat and that is how my love for step wells started. At that time, during say 2015 to 2016, 17, I used to trek heavily in Sayagris. I have covered almost like 125 to 150 folks treks in Maharashtra. So person who has seen structures above the ground suddenly came and touched with structures below the ground. And I fell in love with structures over there, steppels. So when I decided like, uh, let's explore steppels in Maharashtra as well. So when I saw the steppels, I found them very neglected state, very neglected state across Maharashtra. Then there are always two things in front of you. Either you take photos, put them on Facebook and you walk away, or you take a stand to do something good for the society. So 
I thought about a lot about it. Like doing something just from one village, or one taluka is not going to help anything. Should happen across Maharashtra, and there should be no loopholes in this project, entire project. It should be an entire end-to-end -end project with every section of society getting involved in it. And there are many HR concepts as well, which I applied here. Basically, what the work does a HR do? Yeah, HR work is like a link between the employees and the management to take the organization forward. The same way I'm lacking as a link between the public and the government to take this skeptical campaign forward. It should be a succession planning towards it. Like when I grow old, this entire passion of me should be passed on to someone else. For that, that passion will not come from the book. They have to be inculcated. They have to be taught that there are numerous structures. Like how, how should we go about it? Like there should be a centralized place where the like centralized coordination will be done. The data can be showcased to public. And uh, like, see, someone is going from Vidarbha, someone is going from Konkan, someone is going from Uttar Maharashtra. We will never be able to know how many skeptics are there. Someone has to do it centrally and someone has to drive that project centrally. So that, that is the reason how I have like, set this up. Like, as I said, I purposely traveled across Maharashtra on my bike. I personally met each and every different sections of society, told them about this vision. Uh, rest whom I could not make. I am still in touch with them over the phone. I keep talking to new people across Maharashtra. I have a list of 102 architectural colleges across with me. Till now, I have approached 27 of them, and all 27 of them have agreed. So, step by step, phase by phase, I'm approaching from college to college. Different colleges, I'm involving them. I'm involving the youth basically in it because they are going to be the future of this campaign. Maybe 10 years down the line, I may not be there, but I want this campaign to work in the same manner and be a sustainable one. For that, uh, we are also trying to do many community building exercises. Like the Steppel Depot Sub was there, we did not give a, we want to convert it into a mod sub basically. So, Maharashtra going forward will be having a proper two to three days a uh, heritage mod sub where people from different corners of India will be coming to Maharashtra. They will be exploring forks, temples, caves in the vicinity. In the evening, they will be coming towards the temples. We will be organizing some step, some uh, cultural programs like Majan Kirtan is there, Povadas are there, or any, uh, any uh, local uh, cultural fest are there. We will be organizing that. And in the evening, every temple will be uh, lit up by lamps. So this is how we are actually planning this entire project of us. And this I've already proposed it to the Maharashtra government as well. And uh, in the next week, I have a meeting with the Maharashtra Tourism head, the Secretary Maharashtra Tourism. And I'll be uh, submitting this proposal to them, basically. I, today only, I, I was actually on the way from the Maharashtra to Tourism office as well. I had been to the Malbaril office. So today is a very hectic day for me. I started with uh, giving the same way I have when the giving the webinar, I actually went to LS Raja College of Architecture where I presented to the students. Then I went to Sayadri Guest House where I had a meeting with the Maharashtra Tourism Department Director, Joint Director, and the Secretary. And on the way, I'm like now presenting it to you. So second half was very power packed for me. Okay. So yes, so there are multiple activities which I'm doing as that, right from uh, approaching urban sketchers as a group where they will be doing sketching competitions to organizing many different things regularly. How we can also self-ex temple uh, the ports of in some parts when there's not raining at the, during the Tripura Puranima as well. Because it will, people do not just uh, lick up steppels, they also clean the steppels first. So, agar pure saal mein, ek do bar agar clean ho hai steppels, it is actually beneficial. Yeah. Yes. And then how I am also approaching different water management consultants, the geologists and different firms who can actually start reviving this skeptics. So this is the entire campaign. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for that response. And just kind of build up on that last point. Look, water, particularly uh, 
from ground sources, which kind of becomes probably a feeder for the step wells, apart from the um, monsoonal rain. Now, the thing is that it's not only the artifact itself, which is a step well, but this may require an understanding of a larger area beyond the step well. And what kinds of issues may have emerged from all the documentation or the restoration work that you've done? Because for water, really, I mean, in terms of water conservation, um, actually, a prop, uh, an issue that may crop up, not at the site where the conservation has to be done, but at some distance from it, might have a significant impact on the conservation. So what kind of uh, issues have emerged, if they have emerged in your work? If I talk of the urban setup, okay, there are many sewage lines which are now passing by. So the geologists, once they step in, the Groundwater Survey Development Agency, I have passed on this entire data to them. They said that this is a massive work. We need to study because, as I said, the initial phase was during the COVID times. Like, we are happy that we are able to set up a huge platform going forward. But now, these technical people will get it. Okay. See, things will not turn overnight. Okay. They need us survey basically which will take approximately six months testing the water quality before the rainy season and post monsoon as well pre and post monsoon so this is how they will test the water quality and then decide whether this capital water can be used for drinking or for some domestic domestic purpose or maybe for irrigation as well so this is a long process but somewhere it has to be started that work has started and uh, I'm also very happy that uh, our Prime Minister, Honorary Prime Minister mentioned about this on Monkey Bath in March 2022. That was actually a booster for this campaign. Okay. Yeah. I'll open this up to the questions from the audience. And I think we'll take the first question from Parth Kotsarekar, uh, who asks, what are the modern day constraints for constructing a well with the intensity of these ancient step wells. So why are why are modern, why don't we construct step wells today? I mean, in very simple words. And I mean, that I might want to add in conservation and while kind of restoring these places, which is of course the first step to be done, is it possible to think of not freezing them in terms simply of restoration, but ways of engaging with them architecturally um, to make interventions with, within them, which are creative. I mean, and if if I mean if it's the state archaeology department, which kind of is going to be the uh, department which is going to be involved in the older step wells, um, these may be when they get listed or graded. Uh, by by the archaeology department, they may be either two A or two B, grade or one. Nothing below that, and there would be no interventions. They would be kind of you know cordoned off and restored to their original state. So architecturally, in terms of integrating them beyond tourism into the everyday life of people, might find. Um, might be very difficult in that. So yeah, I mean, if you can take up both these questions, why don't we construct uh, step wells today? And how can we kind of engage with them more creatively as again, simply uh, restoring? So after this, I will take this campaign, three people have already come up to me and say, said that Rohan, we are, uh, modified our concept of creating step wells instead of wells. So then three, there's three different people from different uh, locations said that Rohan, we will be creating or building step wells instead of a common well in our farms. So one of my architect friends from Sangli, he said that Rohan, I would love to build a step well like the one at Walu. And I will surely do it in the near future. 
so this is how people will start now getting to the old life instead of creating a well this creative architects basically or who have the funding as well proper funding as well they might well create a step well so so see the main reason of approaching new technical people is that going forward all you guys are going to be somewhere at this conservation architects of in the near future so that is the reason i will also open up different uh, professional opportunities for each one of you maybe you can uh, give a proposal to the government seek csr funds from them and then do the restoration and conservation of the structures so but for that to happen someone should inculcate inculcate them like whenever i ask this question like today i am ls raja college i normally ask this question like how many of you know skeptics in maharashtra Only a few are aware that there are skeptics in Maharashtra. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. yeah so I mean, would you like to add anything, or uh, we, we can go ahead? Okay. Um. We the second question is from Tejeshri Lakras. Um. Who says first of all. A huge appreciation for the inspirational work you're doing, um, and there are four questions that she has. How did you manage to gain attention of villagers conducting cleaning and restoration activities? Secondly, I'm sure uh, you must have spotted following step wells, but if at all it's missed, you may kindly add few step kunds in Murtas of Tulzapur. One step well in by Ahilya Bai, step wells in Lonar, Pushkarni Kund in Old Kalyan. So these are the ones that she's kind of drawing attention to. Thirdly, how can one approach your team to offer further professional conservation uh, so works so slash research? So how can one engage with your team? And fourth, what is the stand of the state archaeology or AS? To protect and further conserve these unique sites. So, taking the questions one by one, uh, the steppes which Ma'am mentioned, okay, this all are mapped actually, but then uh, it was not possible to showcase all the steppes in this slide which I showcased. So, the steppes in Kalyan, the steppes in Tulsapur, this three steppes in Tulsapur, uh, built by Maharani Ayala by Holkar. Are already mapped. Yes. So what? And then how difficult it was convincing the villagers. So as I said, I travel across Maharashtra for the very same reason. See, every 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 taluka is having a certain set of people whom people respect. The heritage lovers. Okay, because they are actually the people who can influence or encourage different people in their talukas. So I met first all these people, explained them about this vision, and then told them that now you people should talk to the uh, villagers be below that. And as I said, when a campaign sets up as huge as a state level campaign, then there are many people willing to participate and willing to do many good things for the state out of emotions and uh, conservation part. So yes, uh, I can pass on the data to Ma'am. Maybe if she has a conservation uh, form or something, she can approach some CSR, uh, CSR form or like, like some huge company like Tatas or Reliance or Sindhulas. Approach them with a proper uh, approval or something like some proposal or something Ma'am can give. And then seek funds and do the conservation part. People will be more than happy. I can help you get in touch with the local team at, at different sites. Then you can get in touch with the gram panchayat. First, seek their opinion whether this sample belongs to some public property or private property. What is their opinion on the same? See, one one is like I want to do. It is out of emotions, and one is the practicality. Okay, if people are willing to use that water, if people are willing to preserve that skeptical, so for that first thing which we need to do is to inculcate these villages, and that is that what the team is currently doing. Like, 
first developed that sense of belongingness in different minds of villagers about these temples, celebrate continuously uh, the Kutsava subcultural fest where they feel that this temple belongs to my village. It is my property. If someone is spoiling it, I should stop them first. First, bring that sense of belongingness and then do the conservation or do then the, the revival of service. Thanks. I hope that answers uh, Tejashree's question. Um, the next question is from Ajinkya, Ajinkya Supekar. Um, Joel, are you there? I want to draw Ajinkya into the panel uh, as a panelist. Uh, uh, yes, right. Uh, I mean, I'll just question. introduce his question and then ask him to expand on it. Uh, Ajinkya says, we work for conserving Hatti Barav in Ahmed, Ahmednagar. Is protection of step wells from Archaeological Survey of India enough? Are there efforts to simplify the process? We're facing many hurdles in collecting the documentation required. Maybe Ajinkya, can you, would you like to elaborate on this question? I mean, for instance, what kind uh, of... Ajinkya, Ajinkya, you're from which team of uh, people like, because Hatti Barao, the team which is working on Hatti Barao, is, are my close friends. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, you you know them. Uh, I'm from yes. uh, uh, Nagar Trekkers Foundation. Yes. Okay, so Suraj is a very close friend of mine. Yes, yes. Okay. So I just uh, saw the link yesterday and I thought of joining this session. Uh, currently, as you know, uh, you would be knowing, uh, we are working on the Hatti Baro project. And uh, uh, the main hurdle that we are facing is uh, uh, we ultimately want to have it protected from the Archaeological Survey of India. Uh, but uh, uh, they have their uh, requirements, as in they, they require, the, require the NOCs from various departments of government. And uh, 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 we are a team of some five to six people, and we have to, you know, uh, 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 keep tab of all the departments and have the documentation and uh, uh, bring it together. And you know, uh, this this has to be done in a proper, uh, uh, what you call, uh, a proper way in which the government demands. So, uh, my question was, ki, is there any, uh, a simpler way to do it or, or is there any... So, uh, uh, to, I, think, yeah, uh, I am in touch with Suraj on this particular topic from last one year. Right. And maybe uh, I have never connected with you, but I often talk with Suraj on this topic. Right. So, let's have a separate call on this, where we three can talk. Sure, sure. So, okay. Cool. Good. It's a nice connection. Um, uh, the next question is from Rishabh Chajar, who asks, I'd like to go back to Rohit's concerns about the conservation and restoration of step wells. It becomes an object for tourism and is put under the heritage value. As you mentioned, there are around 70,000 step wells only in four districts. I wonder why we can't use these as city tanks right now. They're meant for public after all. So, as I said earlier, that these step wells belong to the private properties as well. Okay. So, you just cannot go and use the step wells. You first have to go properly document the step wells, first find out the, who are the owners of it. Are they willing to give it to the uh, public use? Convince them in a proper manner, which we are doing now. Like if I show the Dhanki Steppel, Dhanki Steppel, a group of uh, say 15 youngsters came together and they cleaned the Steppel. We first approached the owner saying that we want to clean the Steppel first. First cleaning the Steppel, then as I said earlier, my, my point is the same thing. One is what we feel like doing and what is the practicality. Okay, these two are two different things. Out of emotions, everyone wants to preserve their heritage. Structures across Maharashtra, be, be it temples, be it caves, be it uh, steppers, be it forts. But one is the practicality, the ground level reality. Are people willing to do good things? So reviving comes much later, I would say. First is building the positive vibes. 
building an atmosphere basically in minds of people about the sense of belongingness. If if a specific NGO, suppose for Pune, goes to Ahmednagar and does this, like example, Hatti Baro. Uh, Ajinkya must be knowing, Hatti Baro was cleaned by various groups across Maharashtra. Four, five times Hatti Baro was cleaned, but every time the Hatti Baro used to get spoiled because locals used to do Ganpati Vesarjan and Hatti Baro. So we, we, first, we have to identify the root cause, where the root cause is, what the root because problem is, identify it, it. Suraj and the scheme of Nagar Krikas did a wonderful job. They prevented the uh, people from doing Ganpati Visarjan and that step well. Uh, also seek the help of uh, local corporators and all that. And they are now receiving a very good step support and they are uh, like cleaning the step well time and again. So when a group establishes who are willing to take care of this uh, step well, only then comes the second one. Even if you talk of Gujarat or Rajasthan, I have very good friends in Gujarat and Rajasthan doing skeptical uh, conservation work. They, even they say that, Rohan, uh, all you guys see just 10 to 15 skeptics of Gujarat, which are in very good condition. And that is the reason you feel like Gujarat is amazing in skeptics. But if you go to the interiors, which I have personally seen, I have been to say, I have explored 70 to 80 skeptics in Gujarat. Not all skeptics are in good condition. Many are in dialogue condition. So first build that atmosphere, first build in the mindset of people, inculcate them, only then this can be possible. Um, thanks. Um, Rishabh wants no, to ask a follow up. Nothing is going to happen overnight. It will take years and years of persistent efforts to do this. Yeah. Uh, Joel, can you get Rishabh in? I mean, I, um, I'll ask, let him ask his Next question, he's asking, can you open up more about this practically? And Rishabh, you, you may want to elaborate this a bit. Yeah, Rishabh, are you there? Yeah, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah can Rishabh. you elaborate on your question? So, I mean, I understand what you're talking about, this building of... Uh, uh, building of culture and the awareness between people of how uh, awareness in people, uh, people about you know step wells and uh, and these structures which are uh, I mean which are present in our uh, surroundings only. But uh, I mean uh, this practicality that you were speaking about, no? Ki ye ye practicality mein hume sochna padta hai ki ye kaise possible? Tab nahi ho. I really want to to uh, elaborate the practicality and the challenges that you face other than what you mentioned. Okay. Now, the challenges vary from city to city or even a village to village. Like we recently faced a challenge wherein I will give you a classic example. There's a five score capital at Ahilyapur, uh, Shekpur Taluk of Duhe, okay, where the capital has a Rajput community, okay? And then uh, how to convince them to preserve a scaffold which is built by Maharani Ailya Bhai Mata. So what things we did differently I will tell you. To generate this massive awareness, we lit up this entire scaffold with LED lights on the occasion of Maharani Ailya Bhai Olkar's Jayanti. Just prior to that, on 31st May is Maharani Ailya Bhai Olkar's Jayanti. Two days prior to that, Saturday to Sunday, we lit up the entire scaffold with LED lights. It was looking magnificent. The entire village of 2000 people participated in it. And now they said that now year on year, we will do it. From next year onwards, we will organize something much bigger to than what is there. And after this event, the ZP, the CEO ZP, Zilla Parishad, came, us to, came up to us and said that we are now taking 60 step wells in Dwey district for event. So every village, every taluka is having its own problems. We are first carrying it, how, how to achieve it, how to crack them, and then going forward. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I really understand what you're trying to say. and uh, But again, again, when it uh, comes to like I'm from Rajasthan okay. and I've uh, and there are lots of steppels around 
uh, which are just lying there. That they are clean, uh, they are decorated, but they are not used. That the water inside there has a has, uh, of course, uh, there's a lot of algae because the water is stagnant. But still, still, you know that water uh, water could be used because there is a water scarcity, uh, and the sources. I mean, uh, so uh, since you've uh, visited a lot of step wells. And uh, and have been into this uh, thing for uh, uh, for so many years. So, I mean, uh, what are your I mean, uh, what are your personal uh, personal inquiries? What are your personal questions that you go through? Ki yar, matlab ye ye recognize kiya aur jo uske logistics hai, hume matlab jis jiski ownership hai. उससे हमने बात की और एंड देन वी गॉट इनटू आई मीन हमें मिल गया रिस्टोर किया डेकोरेट किया फिर लेकिन वो वापस हुई ना हेरिटेज वैल्यू पे बिकॉज़ देन इट अगेन बिकम्स अ ऑब्जेक्ट वेयर पब्लिक गैदर्स सो सी एवरी स्टेप वेल कैन नॉट बी लुक्ड आउट फ्रॉम द वाटर पर्सपेक्टिव ओनली ओके वी हैव टू डू सम ग्रेडेशंस लाइक व्हिच स्टेप वेल्स विल बी फ्रॉम द हेरिटेज पर्सपेक्टिव टूरिज्म डेवलपमेंट एंड वाटर कंजर्वेशन so as i said this is not a one night process but it will take lots of hell of efforts from the entire team actually okay that that is the reason as i said i am approaching different colleges i am approaching the state government and step by step phase by phase wo kya hota na ki 17 15 map kar liye to wo sabke bhavna hai pahunch gaye aasman ke level pe are one night sab kuch badal jayega aisa nahi hone wala let us talk practicality as well correct so we are trying our level best how we can involve the government as well see can i will I'll give you a classic example the national game of india is hockey but why is cricket a brand in india why is cricket being given the importance and not hockey because cricket we have turned it into a brand basically when one structure one part of structure becomes a brand all the focus gets attracted towards that only So I'm trying to create first a brand image of that sector, and playing a lot of another strategy part. When you create a brand called Steppers, when you uh, start doing some uh, Steppers boards of reports of all that attraction gets all the people's views get attracted to that specific structures, and only then some good things happen. Like uh, as I said, the town planning department has taken up few steps for revival. Like they've given the proposal to the central government. So this is a positivity for me. So step by step, I'm very sure the government will step it. I mean, but this approach of creating a brand. I mean, I'll take your example only of cricket. It eventually uh, got commodo. I mean, that it's not commodified. Ho gaya hai wo ki abhi it has it has become very uh exclusive if you say of a foreign national team and how creating a uh, uh, a brand uh, uh, yeah i'm I, i mean i'm just asking questions i mean you're doing uh, really nice work uh, uh, but uh, but i was just intrigued you know ki this approach of uh, again again creating a brand and decorating and and you know wo fir eventually it will again go into the hands of the, the people in power and and this is of course government uh, takes over wo acha hai government ka public realm mein hi rahega but agar wo brand ban gaya to wo corporate realm mein bhi chale jayega fir i mean there are these all all trajectories and i'm i'm very confused and Uh, okay. because that so, was a wonderful presentation i didn't know maharashtra had so many step wells so so i will uh, tell you from two different perspectives one is uh, how will you create funds for it who has that funding power to revive those step wells because it will take efforts like one is the manpower efforts one is the funding efforts so who will step in the government has to step in for numerous step wells revival is not a uh, cost of say 5000 or 10000 it will take massive lakhs of rupees or crores of rupees and the steps a revival the government the administration has to step in and for for like emotions part like revival when it comes only when the steps is in clean condition 
and for keeping it clean, we are doing this completely building exercise. If you directly say that the, the, like we have to revive the skeptical, then just imagine that people again throwing plastic bottles in it, again throwing some garbage in it. It will not solve the purpose only. So what all things you can do positively to take this into a people's interest is what should like. Suppose the Gram Panchayat only takes a call like this is a like Gram Panchayat. Because the people's uh, representative, he's saying that we want to revive this capital out of the government funds. That is a good thing. Like, I will give you a classic example. Sunil Kendrikar, sir, the divisional commissioner of the entire Marakwada region, he himself visited all these Parbani capitals and appreciated the work being done across the state. The state, uh, the district collector of uh, Parbani district, actually stepped in, uh, she also helped in the uh, preservation of skeptics. So this is how we are creating positive vibes and getting the government involved in a positive manner. I, I, I completely kind of agree uh, with you in the sense that, you know, this is a lot of work um, that is required. And um, in the last two or three years, being able to put this together is, is something that is really commendable. And on that note, and probably the mouth probably opens out an area of work for several people to kind of think about in the future in terms of architectural practice in, in very interesting ways. Um, on that note, I'd like to thank you, uh, Rohan, for um, sharing your work with us and engaging with us in this enthusiastic talk. Um, I hope we'll be able to connect soon and from C we'll kind of draw you in as and when other opportunities of engaging you in conversation arise. Um, thank you, thank you very much. I would also like to thank um, the Sharma Foundation uh, who has uh, helped us uh, and supported this program and co-curated it along with the ongoing support of the Urban Center Mumbai. Our next lecture of Sea Conversations will be on 9th September by Ignacio Farias. Um, we'll keep all of you posted through announcements um, and um, we'll be back on 9th of September. Thanks, thanks a lot, Rohan. Uh, thanks a lot on the behalf of the entire team. Our team. It's, it's been our pleasure. Sure. Thank you.